gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we have a very special guest in the house today. I just acting up show, Laquita. I ain't home. Round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, yes. hello. She's a friend of the show. She's a friend. She come all the way from M Town. Yes, Memphis. Yes, we're here. We're here. Yeah. I love it. Thank now, you guys so much. Yes, no ma'am. Problem. Now, are you, are you originally from Memphis or? I'm not. No, really? I'm not from. Nope, I'm not from Memphis. I am a military child. I am actually from a small town in Mississippi. So I'm a farm girl. I grew up on a farm in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. And once nice. my father got into the military, I just kind of traveled with him. We were on the San Diego base. He was in the Navy. We went from there to like Waukegan to Rockford. And then we ended up in uh, Millington. And that's how we ended up in Memphis um, once I got here in middle school. And that's where I, I've been here ever since then. Nice. So that, that, that's pretty much home right there. That's home. Yeah, this home. This home. <laughs> so um, so what inspired you to get into, because you're, you're a filmmaker. Uh, we've all gotten a chance to work with you. Yeah. Uh, so what inspired you to get into film? Actually, um, I was a writer first. So um, I'd originally started writing urban fiction stories. Um, a lot of those stories were kind of just based off ro relationships, um, things that women go through, um, just trying to be an inspiration to them. And I was like, OK, somebody's going to see one of these books. They're going to put it on TV. You know, I look at them like lifetime stories. Somebody's going to do it. And then it just never happened. And then when COVID hit, my job was like, uh, you essential, but you're not essential. So I lost my job and I had nothing to do. And my husband was like, man, you got to do something around the house. So I was like, well, I do got, you know, a degree in accounting already. I'm an accountant for a law firm. So I was like, why not use this time to study film? And when I did, somebody said, do you know they got a film program at the University of Memphis? I was like, no. I was like, I went there for accounting. They was like, you should probably look into this. So I did. And because of COVID, you could take classes online. You could do all those things. And once I got into it, lo and behold, my job called me and they were like, oh, we need you back. I'm like, no, nah, I'm at film school. <laughs> but <laughs> but I was like, you know what? I'm going to take it with a grain of salt because at that time it was my income. So once I started back um, working, my job was like, you know what? Hey, we let you go and you got into something. We're going to work with you on it. So it was just God. It was just his time and saying Let's work with her on this film. Let's work with her to make sure she can work, you know, at, at work and use her time to go to school. And then once I got my degree, I was it was it was like I put my feet on the ground and that was it. I turned started turning my books into film. Man, uh, we, we, we gotta we gotta get one of those buttons where we drop one of clues bombs or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, or something, man. That, I, I love hearing that. Um, Sorry, I just love hearing that, you know, when you left, you know, your job and they saw how important that you were to them, they're like, let's work with her. Yeah. We, th yes. Black women win, bro. We need yes. that. That's that's always the case. When I quit my job just recently, like a week ago, they called me back. Oh, wow. Yeah, that it that's all that happens. They <laughs> they never appreciate you when you're there. You exactly. know, they, they wait exactly. until you go and then they say, oh, no, nah, we're going to need you to come yeah. back. But by that time, it's too late because you and already found your passion just like we all have. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. OK, that's what's up. Uh, talk about your process of writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, how do you create your stories? Well, for me, my process of writing is character driven mm -hmm. um, because I. I build my stories around certain characters. The process for writing them is who do I want to write about? That's how I start my writing. If I'm not writing about a particular person, then I think the stories just kind of go left, right. There's all kinds of things happening. But if I'm writing about a specific person mm. and who they have as a relationship, who encounters something with them, who is keeping them from doing what they want to do, who is being a burden in their life, then it makes it easy to write a story because I can say, here's mama, that's her love, that's the person they love. Here's the boyfriend who's giving them problems. Here's daddy who, you know, may be sick, you know, and, and they may have to care for them, but that drives the story. So that's how I write a lot of my films. I do it character driven. The main person that I'm writing about has to have all these people around them doing something. And if they're not important to that character, I don't write them. So that's easy for me to do that because if I take a doctor and say, hey, here's a doctor, well, what's going on with them? Uh, well, they got a sick, you know, sick child. They just got married, but there's problems in that relationship. It, it gives yeah. me a story to go on. Yeah. Hmm. 
Nice. So that, yeah, that's pretty much yeah, character driven. Yeah, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, so my question is right here. So the acting side. Mm-hmm. When did that come into play? The acting for me, or as far as like having actors and and interacting with them. My oh, acting for you. Oh my God. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the acting for me kind of came into play where there were films and projects that I felt other people were able to play them. And if mm-hmm. for some reason um, they could not play them or it was just something that they weren't comfortable with, I said, hey, you know what? Maybe I can take that role. Maybe this is something that I can do. That way the story still goes on. Because at the end of the day, the project, it has to be done. And if it's not, you know, it, it falls back and it never gets made. So I'm like, either I'm going to step in and do it and be this person, or either we're going to miss that person and the story will have holes in it. So I think I, I just, it's all about sacrifice. I sacrificed myself to be able to act in it. It wasn't something I wanted to do, but it was something that I knew I could do. And if I would just put the passion behind that character, it would, you know, help the story out and help us to get the film done. So that's how I got into acting. And I'm just not shy. I'm not a shy person at all. So to me, um, I've always wanted to be in the space of acting, um, not wanted to be a direct actor, but just in that space, it, film related and all. So what has been like the most challenging part of your career so far in this journey? The most challenging part is being a being a director, because mm. to me, being able to direct, there are so many responsibilities there's a responsibility of making sure your actor has this there's a responsibility of making sure the story is told the way it's written um there's a responsibility of making sure all these little pieces come together to put this puzzle together and if you don't brainstorm you don't plan um you don't really understand the process of directing it can be challenging because every project is going to be different there's going to be something different that's going to fall by the wayside you may show up on set as a director and oh my god so-and-so's car is flat. Oh, what what scene are we going to do? You know, you panic. So there's all these little things that can happen while you're on set that you just never expect. You can get to a location and all of a sudden the doors are locked. And they're like, wait, what happened? And you find out you got scammed. You know, you got scammed. Yeah. And ain't nobody even yeah. there. So you just yeah. like, I'm not pay for this location. Yeah. Ain't nobody here. Mm-hmm. So those, it's, a, it's just a lot that, that you don't expect as a director. And I think that's the challenge. But um, I just try to be prepared because I know there's going to be a challenge. <laughs> yeah. And, and that should go the same for actors because yes, if they tell you you're going to be here at like 8 o'clock in the morning, yeah. we expect to leave at yeah. 2. Yeah, that, but that they miss that expect part. Yes. They think we're going to leave at, at 2. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's expect to leave at two. You can leave there at eight at, at night. That's where right. I'm right. Right. On, on set. So you got to be mentally prepared that yes. you're gonna be here all all day. Absolutely. <laughs> a, or at least part of your day. You know, part that you didn't expect. Absolutely. That's yeah. so true, factors. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got a shout out to your team as well. You have a great team behind you. Um <laughs> yeah. Just, Thank just you. Able- like I said, we've all worked with you before and just being able to work with you all, you can tell you all are just in sync and, thank and you. You all, y'all get it done. Like, thank you. Thank you. Know, you. Thank you. It, hey, it, it takes, it really takes a team. And, and that's why I tell everybody, when even when they start filming with me and James know this, um, you all do as well. Even when we start filming, I tell everybody the end goal, the end goal is, it's not about me. This film is about all of us. And if I don't do well, you all can't do well. So I think the main thing is to make sure that my team understands, hey, when we're on this set, we're here because we're we're using people's time to make something that's special. But at the same time, we have to be respectful of their time. We have to be respectful mm-hmm. of things that they could be doing outside of this yep. had they not agreed to do this project. So let's make sure that they understand whether it's in verbal or nonverbal that we appreciate the time they're giving. And so that's what it's really all about as a team. I try to make sure that we're all on the same page because when we get on set, I want us to just have fun with it. I don't want us to stress, you know, or struggle in between what we're doing. Nice, mm-hmm. nice. Um, when you're not directing, writing, acting, just in your creative space, what do you like to do in your spare time? Uh, honestly, I like I really like to travel and spend time with my family um, nice. because I have four kids and because I work and do the things that I do. Um, a lot of times that time is taken from them. So for me, when I'm not doing those things, the best thing to do is to focus on them and show them, hey, even though I'm saying this is for you, you're just important is what I'm doing. 
And, Mm -hmm. you know, because some of my kids were in my movies, they're not in a lot of my films. So they do kind of understand that I'm working. But at the same time, it's like, okay, they know that if I was not on set with y'all, I could be doing something else with them. You know, so I just use that time. Watch, we watch movies, we'll play video games or something, or we'll Mm -hmm. go out to eat. So that's generally what I like to do. We'll, We'll have fun, you know. Nice. I like the way how you got your son. He was uh <laughs> behind the camera and yeah. in your in your yeah. people. That's that man. That's what's up, man. Cause yeah. you could have you could have got anybody else, anyone Absolutely. else to you know to do it outside of the family. But like mm-hmm. keeping it all in the family. That's mm-hmm. that that was matters. You know. Yes. And I like that. Yes. Oh, my kids know I put them to work. <laughs> oh yeah, for hey, sure. How you think you're gonna get them shoes? Okay, so oh, you may yeah. not cut no grass, but uh, oh, yeah. can, you, can you listen and see if this sounds good? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There you go. And so when that time do come, where you guys, you know, yeah. and everything falls in place, yeah. everyone has a job, and no yeah. one is just oh, you give me this and give me that, give me, give me, give me. No, no. they actually work for me. So exactly. I like that. Thank you, thank you. Yes, Maybe. thank you. It'd be funny to be a weld oil machine. I'll be just sitting there like, look at this. It is so funny. I love seeing it. I just love seeing it. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. So um I would say share with us your first experience from your first film and mm-hmm. to your latest film. Talk about mm-hmm. your growth as a director and an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, my growth in doing with my first film, it was really just do what you think needs to be done. And just take the information that you have and run with it. So for me, the first thing that I did was I started listening to a lot of different directors, started following Mm. a lot of different directors. And I was like, you know what, for this first film, let me see what I need to do. I reached out to some directors here in Memphis and shadowed them. Um, Mm. I shadowed a director called uh, Robert Parker and I shadowed him on several projects. And so once I shadowed him, I was like, all right, this is what I need to do for my project. He educated me on certain things. He showed me that you know, this is something you don't want to do as a director. Here's how you may want to interact and do things on set. So I did that. But at the same time, I was still, it was my first time. I had never met these actors. Um, It was in 2021 when we were filming The Bodyguard. And this was a film based off um, depression, mental health, and the main character um, who was Desiree, she was a uh, social media um guru and she was a social media person to where she had all this money all this fame yet everybody around her no one loved her so the importance of this film getting out was that i had to get it out because it was important to me and i felt like people needed to see it um of course there is a lot of issues with mental health so once we did that first film there were all kind of things going wrong just left and right um actors were dropping out at the last minute there were actors on set that had never worked with me you know that really weren't comfortable yet so we had to kind of get them comfortable or either we were on set and certain locations just weren't working for us either it was too windy or maybe somebody forgot wardrobe and i was like i'm just not prepared i was not prepared for the first one so fast forward to now the 10th one that we just recently filmed which was in atlanta um we filmed that one and It was just, like I said, the preparation. Like, oh my God, when I prepared myself to be on set and just knew that this was not my first one, we planned ahead, so we did casting calls. For the first one, I really didn't do casting calls the way I was supposed to. Um, And the first one I acted, but I really wasn't making sure the camera angles and everything were the way they needed to be. Um, Mm -hmm. We were doing the editing all on our own, so we had no one to educate us. So after that first one, we started educating ourselves on editing. We started educating ourselves on sound. We started educating ourselves on on, uh, equipment. And Mm -hmm. once that happened now, we just have a better sense of what we need on set, how many actors we can film at a certain time we keep the time on set to make sure we don't go over you know we check Mm -hmm. batteries we check equipment we call ahead of time and say hey is this venue still available we rented it Mm -hmm. we just prepare ourselves more so that's what helped um and and continues to help now because at first one we just thought hey we show up on set and and people are going to be there nope that was not how we We still had to literally call people and say hey are you still coming on set you know, yeah. we just want to make sure we're 30 minutes in. We're supposed to start filming. And these actors, either they don't answer or either, oh, you know, I got a call and now I can't come. So there was a lot to that first one. But now we call ahead and we do everything to make sure that that day is going to at least go uh, 75% of the way that we want it to go. And so that's right. the difference between then and now. And now with the acting, um, back then I was a little shyer. Now I know that 
if don't nobody else come on and do it, I'm gonna put on six, seven wigs and I'm gonna get this project done. <laughs> that's, right, that's how right. it goes to my acting right yeah. now. Okay, I could be grandma, yeah. auntie, yeah. sister, <laughs> Betty, <Yeah. laughs> the preacher, whoever. <laughs> get it done, get it done. I'm, I'm <laughs> Whatever it takes, you know. Yes. Uh, so, out of the films you've done so far, do you have a, a one that's your favorite, or that's the one that's like, you know, this one I really just enjoyed this. One. Um, I don't. I swear, I don't have any favorites. I really love all the films. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the films that I do kind of love a lot, um, a lot more, and that's just because of the story and the sense of understanding and everything that I kind of gained from it. Uh, when filming it, I would say that it is um, a cold hearted Christmas. And in doing that project, I literally did research on teenagers that run away from home, you know, kids that are homeless. Um, there was a lot of things that I had to do to make myself learn that I was Mrs. Coldheart. I'm this lady who's taking, who took in these kids and who are, they're now adults, but they're still going through things even as adults. And I have to be there for them because no one else was. So right. I literally did the research to see where these houses are, where these teenagers are. And it just hit me like, there are a lot of kids that are either homeless, they don't have mm -hmm. good homes that they're living in, so they run away. So to me, that story was really important because that's what that story is about. And with without people like Mrs. Coldheart to take in kids and teenagers and, and raise them, and even as adults to help them come back and say, hey, let me help you fix your life, a total stranger. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that was important to get that story out. So that was one of my favorite ones. It was just most important to me and, and most heartfelt for me to play a role and, and to put that out. No, I, I seen that one. That was a really good one. I, I like that the fact that you don't see stories like that. No, yeah. no. So when I watched it, I was like, "Oh, okay. This this is not what I thought it was going to be. This is right. Like you know, it's yeah. like I like to see different stories." And yes, that was a great story. Thank and you. I, so good. Right. <laughs> um, top five actors you would love to direct. The top five I would love to direct. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to direct. A film with uh, Angela Bassett. I know she is a director, and I wouldn't be able mm. to direct her as much, but directing a film with her would definitely be good. Um, Issa Rae is definitely mm. someone I would love to. She is just hilarious. So I would love to direct mm. a film. <laughs> she is hilarious. Um, I would also love to direct something with like Shamar Moore, um, the Wayans brothers. If if I could just get, you know, some of, some of Keenan's time. You know, I, I'm I'm like an old school. I, I'm an old school movie fanatic, so I love low low down dirty shame. I love all those kinds of movies. So just being able to direct them in something, knowing that they're still crazy, still funny, um, I would love to do something like that. And then, of course, I got I'm a fan of The Rock. Okay, so yep. if I could get yeah. anything with Dwayne Johnson, I'm just saying I would have to direct <laughs> something with him because he he does action and he does thrillers, and I love doing those too. So between the comedies and the the romantic thrillers i think i got a good pick of, of some good actors i love to direct with <laughs> that's a great pick yeah. i like those picks <laughs> love those i think um it's funny too that you mentioned blow down dirty shame because uh, what's his name r.i.p to him um the guy who played as wayman yes wayman? yes uh -huh. I think, didn't we have ronson on here he said that's his uncle that's his uncle yeah that's, okay. that's his that's his uncle and yes. my mama told me that he actually used to watch me and my older two older sisters when we was kids. Really? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And okay. uh so, I'm, I'm I'm gonna say sorry to my dad before yeah. right now because Wayman he told my daddy he said why why are your daddy so he said my daddy is ugly but we got some some good looking kids. <laughs> I said yeah <laughs> so my dad, every time he came around my dad was like man I don't like that man. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, yo, yeah. I'm like, that was too hilarious. That was. Oh my. That was, wow, like, that's dude. awesome! Y'all just had him on the show. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And as a matter of fact, that was my he was my favorite character. You know, I love a good character. Like to me, and that's why I write character driven stories. Like, look yeah. how he made part of that movie like if you cannot watch you cannot say that movie without mentioning him like and that's what i think is important for a lot of actors to see if you can just take this character and run with it like some of these people do oh yeah. my god yeah he only, yeah only had a small role too but it, he had a funny hilarious role yes yeah. yes yeah absolutely now, um one last question before we go here uh because with everyone we bring on we always 
you know, asking them just to drop a, a one gem or, or just a few mm-hmm. gems just for anybody looking to get into this business, mm-hmm. someone that's active in this business. What's the best piece of advice that you can give? Uh, the best piece of advice I can give is to just get out and actually do it. Um, do not let anyone tell you that you can't. Don't worry about if it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Don't worry about if people are going to like it. Um, don't worry about if people are not going to show up because the ones who are going to show up are going to show up. The places that you need to film in are going to be available. The um, opportunity that's going to come behind it is going to be endless. So just yeah. get out and do it. Yeah. That is one that's a gem right there, ladies. <laughs> I appreciate it. Now, one one quick thing, then quick question. Yes. Okay. What is the best barbecue in Memphis? Oh my god. Because <laughs> my boy, my it. boy Chris got bamboozled. <laughs> well, we got bamboozled. <laughs> we got bamboozled. I didn't bring that up, Mike. <laughs> we, I, I had to bring it up, dog. Because we never asked, we never asked her when we was down there. Yeah, she was so, so busy. Right. I really was busy. But to me, the best barbecue is Rendezvous. If you have not been to Rendezvous and that is downtown, it is a barbecue place we, that is fire. Okay. Did we do that? We didn't go there. No, no, no y'all. Didn't. Yeah. <laughs> you probably, yeah, you didn't. Yeah, I'm well, sure. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? It, it was like, oh, like, like, it was like, bro, what is this? <laughs> I told I had but I had I James. Like, there are what a lot of say? good places, though. There are a lot of good places. Like, you would probably have to go to Tops, to Corky's, or something like that. But you definitely, Rendezvous has the best barbecue. Um, <laughs> as far as, that's my opinion, of course. But there are a lot of good barbecue places. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Y'all should have told me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, told, I told them that, too. They have you I, don't worry. Nice. Next time, next time we got you. We're going to make sure you get the, the best barbecue that you're supposed to be getting. I, I had James dying because I'm like, man, what is this? <laughs> oh, like, you, you can get this is just, you can go to the store and get some Jimmy Dean's and put it in barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> he called me. I said, why y'all ask Queen? He said, man, she was busy. It might uh, she, I you heard. Ask, yeah, you, yeah, you got to ask me ahead of time. If you ask me ahead of time, yeah. like, go some good places. We're going to have to do that next time. Like, just get y'all a list of some good places. Just only eat here. <laughs> Oh. I was laughing. I was cracking up. Chris was on the phone. I had Mike. Chris like, man, dog, this barbecue, man. It's, it, and then I had Mike in the background. Throw the whole pig away. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the <away. laughs> That's a waste of a pig, man. <laughs> yeah. That's Mike. I was talking about it the whole flight. I was like, oh, <laughs> the whole flight. Was like, man, like, man yeah, try this Memphis barbecue. Like, barbecue. You know, we in Texas. We take our barbecue serious. We, we take yeah. our barbecue serious now. <laughs> 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 So oh, sorry. That man took the phone away from Chris. He said, Give me that phone. Hey, look, let me say, James. James. Hey, man, James. Man, what is this man? <laughs> oh, oh my God. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Hey. Never again. You don't got to worry about that. Never again. We'll make sure you know where to go. All right. <laughs> we man, got look, you. Look, look, tell us um, where we can uh, follow you at. Tell the audience where we can follow you at. Um, you all can follow me on social media, on Facebook, or on Instagram at Miss South Films. Um, or you can follow me as Laquita Langhorn, and that's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, filmmaker, actor, actress, writer, Jill mom. of all trades, mom, <laughs> everything. And and uh, one thing before you go, Laquita, thank you so much. Every time I work with you, it's just been hospital. It's been great every time and it's just yeah. hospitality and very you're welcome. welcome so you're welcome she, quita was silly the first time i met her she was like what's up I'm like, all right what's up man like <laughs> i so know like, right yeah. yeah well i have to be myself because i feel like as a director like nobody especially when you're filming with new people if they don't know you let them know how you are because i'm approachable and i don't want people to be standoffish like okay can i say something around her like i'm not mm-hmm. that per- i'm the same way all the time so and i want people to feel that they can be themselves around me if i'm myself hey be yourself and we can both be ourselves you know like you can put some people in the room you never know how goofy they are they really are until they start talking so that day, that's just me all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, we appreciate it. We're Thank you. I appreciate y'all.